Hi everyone. Uh, in this video, we are going to uh, demonstrate that how to create access control list, specifically extended access control list, where we will be using source as well as destination address to block some of the traffic and maybe to allow some of the traffic. So in a standard, so we have two access control lists. One is a standard, second one is extended. So in, in a standard, we only give the source IP address, for example, if we say just we want to block the traffic from this PC or from this network to some specific, to, to just we give the source address. But this in extended, we also give the source and as well as the destination, that from this particular source to that particular destination, we want to block some of the traffic and maybe we want to allow some of the traffic. So, and we also mention the port numbers as well, so we can decide on the base of the port numbers. So for demonstration, I have taken this lab, and if you're interested that how this lab is created, I, I have the another video just that is used to create this lab. So to make this video shorter, I haven't mentioned this, but I'm going to put the, uh, the, the link in the description section where you can find out the video, and you, if you're interested, then you can create the exactly this lab or this network there. Anyway, so in this uh, network we have, sorry, in this lab we have these two networks. This is first network on the left hand side. This is the uh, second network on the right hand side. This is 192.168.10.0 network. This is 10.10.10.0 .10 .10 uh, network. So these are two networks. So I have not used here the by default subnet mask. I have used the 24 uh, as, as a subnet mask. In these three initial octets are used in the network portion. Anyway, so these two networks, and they are connected with the router, some static routing has, in, has been enabled there, and uh, we can ping, and we can we can uh, create SSH station uh, with this router or this router using any PC. So what happens here, and also for the SSH, I also have a detailed video, I'll put the link in the description section that how to enable uh, password. On, on line DTY uh, ports or, line, or virtual lines of the routers. So I have set a local username and password on this router so that the user should be able to access or create a secure shell connection on this router. So for example, to prove that, uh, then I'm going to use this PC. For example, on this PC, I'm going to access or create a SSH connection to this router. So for that, I go to desktop and then command prompt and give the SSH a command there, SSH minus L. And then I have created a local username and password on this router and the username is admin there. And the IP address of this router, which I'm using is 172.16.01. So I say 172.16.0.1 and press enter. So you can see it's asking me for a password. So if I give that password, and so if I give that password, this will allow me to access this router's IOS, so IOS, using secure shell connection from this PC. So now I am in the IOS of this router. If I want to go to enable mode or privilege mode, then I write enable and press enter, but I have second password on enable mode, so I gave the second password, which is for enable mode, and press enter. Now you can see I'm in privilege mode, and now I can go to global configuration mode, so I can do whatever I want with this router, because I have access to the IOS of this router sitting on this PC. So in today's lab, our purpose is that we want to block this PC when, we, when uh, this PC is trying to create an SSH connection with this router using this IP address. Okay, so what we do for that purpose, we know that this is the source address and this is the destination address and we, we are only interested in blocking SSH connection. It means we also know the port number of that SSH. It means we will be specifically selecting source as well as destination and the particular port which we want to block. So in this case, we will use extended access control list because standard access control list doesn't provide us this facility. So let's create the extended access control list. So first step is to create extended control list and then to apply. But now 
for extended access control list this is recommended that this list should be created and applied on the interface which is as close to the source as possible so as close to the source so we want to block this pc so our source of traffic is this pc and we will be creating this access control list on a router so as with respect to router this pc is as close so this is very close or uh, this is the interface which is as close as possible to this source it means we need to use this interface this router and this interface to create and apply that access control list and then let's suppose that we want to see sorry we want to see that which interface is that then just I hover over this on this triangle you see c0 slash 1 is the interface on this router and f0 1 is the interface of this way so it means this router and G0 slash 1 is the interface we want to apply this access list to. So let's create the access control list because then we want to apply access control list. First, we need to create it. The first step and the second step, we need to apply that access control list to that particular interface. Now to create that one, first we need to go to this command line interface. And on this command line interface, first then we need to go to enable mode. And here see we have some password there, so we can give the password to enter in the privilege mode. And from this privilege mode, we need to go to this global configuration mode. And in global configuration mode, now we can create our access list, our extended access control list. So we say access list. And then question mark, we can use any number in this range because these are the number for extended access control list. So for example, I'm using 150 number for my access control list. And then press and a question mark for further lab, it says that you can use this one. So we say we want to deny some specific type. We said deny and then question mark. It's asking that which protocol you want to use. So we use TCP because this SSH uses TCP protocol. So we select a TCP. And then it's saying that give the IP address, source IP address, any or single host. So we are interested to block only single host, so we say host, and then we need to give source address. In this case, source address of this PC, that is 10.10.10.2. And then question mark, after question mark, it's asking destination address, any are equal. So what we do, maybe we give the destination address. So in our case, destination address is this IP address. We are using this IP address or this interface, 172.16.0.1. So we say that is 172.16.0.1. And question mark. And this destination wildcard mask. So we are asking the router to check these all four octets. So once these all four octets are matched, then they should take the decision. So for that, we use this wildcard mask 0.0.0.0. So this means all these four octets will be checked by the router before making any decision. And then question mark, then say you want to use the um, equal match only packets on a given port number. So with this, if you have different op operation, you can say greater than, less than, but we are we are interested in blocking some specific port, so we say equal, so we'll match only packets on a given port, so we'll say equal there, and then which port number, so uh, the SSH uses a well-known port, that port number is 22, so we use 22, and then press, I think enter, so this is the complete command which we have given here, so we can see this is the complete command by which we created first entry in this access control list. So I then press enter. So the first entry in access control list. So we have denied some traffic from some specific source, some specific destination. And now as we know that at the end of every access control list, we have an entry which will block all of the remaining traffic, which will block. But we are not interested in blocking remaining traffic. We want to permit the remaining traffic. So what we do, we create a second entry in the same access control list to explicitly permit all of the IP traffic. And for that, what we do, we again use the same command access list and with the same number because the entry we want, the second entry we want in the same access control list. And then we want to permit. So instead of deny, we want to permit. And this time traffic from 
IP protocol, okay, and then we say uh, to the same maybe host is same so ten dot ten dot ten dot two, and the destination, the destination we can give the same destination that is one seventy two. So that is 172.16.0.1 and then subnet or wildcard mask. So this is the wildcard mask we get and then that's it. So we want to say that all the remaining IP traffic from this host to this one. So this is the one way that we explicitly mentioned that. And if you want to say that any 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 then we can also use for example here we can say ip from any source to any destination this is allowed so we can use this one as well let's enter so now we created two entries in our access control list if we want to see then we can use this show access list command and in this command we can see it shows that this extended list is there the first entry is this one and second entry is this so we have created access control list with two entries there. So first step is over and the next step is to apply this access control list to particular interface. So we want to apply this to this D0 slash one interface of this router. So first we need to go to that particular interface for that we go to global configuration mode and from this mode we can access this particular interface that is G gigabit ethernet zero slash one press enter and now if I want to apply that access control list then we have the command that IP access group and then we give the number of the access list we created so we created access list using this number so same number is being applied here and then we want to apply this access list to maybe inbound traffic or outbound so we are to apply this to inbound traffic so whenever the packet arrives there it will take the decision so we say inbound traffic and we press enter. Done. We have created and applied the access control list on this router. Now let's suppose check again. Are we able to reach this interface to establish SSH station on this router? Okay. So let's go to this PC and for this we say as it may be. Uh, let's say yeah so we can go to this pc and let's try to establish ssh connection so ssh minus l then we need to give the username which we have created on that router that is admin and then we give the ip address of this router for which so this is 172.16.0.1 16 and then we press enter and this time this should not allow to create SSH session because we have blocked this IP address in, in, by using access control list our extended access control list we have blocked this users to establish an SSH session on this router using this IP address so this this uh, this working I think this not allowing to try uh, the SSH connection but before that you could see that before that this was um, possible and we could give the password and we were there in the router but this time you can see it's not allowing maybe you should try it again using the same one so wait for a while traffic will go there to that interface to that interface and it will reject it okay but we said that rest of the traffic should be allowed so let's say if you want to ping the same interface so this interface 172.16.0.1 so ping 172.16.0.1 so this should allow the ping request because this is not ssh connection but this is ping so this uses icmp protocol so we have said that allow all the ip traffic we said that we got that we we got that and it's going to allow the traffic from there. So this this was the lab for today, and uh, I hope you uh, got some idea that how to configure extended access control list there uh, and using packet tracer. So.
all. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time and hope to see you in some other lab.